What did you think about what we saw there? Hmm. We're, we're just saying that um, it's about there wasn't really a, a book introduction about you know the, the title and looking at the picture and what the book might be about. She told them. Mm -hmm. She told them. Yeah. She didn't ask them. She did not ask that question in an open-ended way. She told them, "This is Sally and the Sparrows." Yeah. Yeah. I know down here I overheard a discussion about were there too many teaching points? Yeah, it was a good, I only heard bits of it. What were you saying about that? Oh, just things like ch cheek, syllables and garden, and Tony was saying, you know, if they were gonna, she was going to do syllables, they could have done garden, sparrow, and connected it throughout. Mm -hmm. And then the, the quotation marks as well. Yep. And the finger pointing as well. Yes. It's interesting. Yeah. And the revision point? Yes. Were they, and here's the question, okay, if they were teaching points, were there too many for that group? What was your sense? <coughs> Maybe it depended on how often they'd done this in before. It may yeah. not have been a um, new teaching yeah. point, it was just... Yeah, they weren't new teaching points, they were, you used the word revision. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a good thing to look at. Am I clear in my teaching focus and are there too many things? Lisa, what did you want to say? Well, I thought the teaching point came after this discussion. So the teaching point was about expression and yeah. looking in at the text in mm -hmm. a different way. <coughs> All of those things were the level, the mm -hmm. other things, the cheek, the garden, the bread box. Yeah. They're the scaffolds, the level of support that they might have needed or a revision yeah. to, to read it. That was the scaffold to do the independent reading. Yes. So they're the different elements. Yeah. The, the scaffolding to do the reading and it came up during the actual the walkthrough, yeah. There was the teaching at the end about the um, concept about print around quotation marks, yeah. Do you think there was any comprehension work around what they did? The one was about books of red boxes. Yes, yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. But comprehension too of the story as a whole by work by walking through the story as a whole, understanding the beginning, the middle, and the end. And she asked. It was a narrative, and there were some questions around the problem. How is she going to get the birds down? What do you predict? What do you think? Yeah. And then they checked. She took it back during the discussion. Were we correct? <coughs> yeah. If we look at um, if we look at here in this, I would want to be ensuring there was some comprehension, but would we agree that mainly it was about the learning to read? And then there was, as Lisa said, opportunity for independent practice and application of that, but we would need to be ensure that, that there's comprehension as well. If we look at it through the lens of dialogue, what do we see in the dialogue? Teacher. Yeah, very, yeah, teacher to student, very definitely. If we look at the three teaching examples in terms of monitoring, you know, monitoring what the students were doing, did we see that in each of the examples? Yeah, what sort of monitoring did we see teachers doing? <coughs> Yeah. yeah for the two groups that would obviously prep to two, there were running records. What other monitoring did we see? Did we see on the spot the teacher going back to some student behaviours of what the student said or what they did and then on the spot giving some reinforcement or using that as a teaching point? So that's a really close link between monitoring and teaching practice. Okay, if we looked at it just, and also two of them talked about finger pointing, and if we come back over to this area of our practice, why do you think the two teachers made some statements around that and some behaviour expectations around finger pointing? Because they expect the kids to Yeah, and earlier in the year we looked at, and when we've looked at what is effective comprehension practice, and we know that 
getting fluency in place is important so that we can read fluently. Decoding is not our issue that we are reading to learn. So if we link it back to the theory, why that would be important for those students who are at that, those earlier stages. Yep. Another thing that, um, and this goes back to Sally's point, just thinking about over break time, and Sally was saying, and quite rightly, there are a number of times where the teacher here was asking questions in a closed way. But another way that we can analyse our work is to actually analyse, record the dialogue and actually analyse it. And I did this analysis just um, from quick notes really, but it can actually help you notice different things and think about our work individually and as a team. That teacher said, what will you expect to read about on this page? And we can analyse open or closed. And we can also analyse why would you do that? Why would you ask that question? Because that, it's, and we can relate it back to, well, it's getting students to tune in, to use their prior knowledge, to predict. She asked them, what is this word? You know, why would she have asked that question? What, what do you think? Yeah, a key word. Yeah. She talked about the author did, she did tell them, she didn't ask them, the author did this. The author wants you to know, and that was about layout and about bold text. She just told them that. She asked the question, what do you expect to be reading about? And that was part way through the text. And you read and see what you think. There was the I wonder question, I wonder why elephants like mud. Think and wonder about this as you read, so that there was reading with a question in mind, reading for meaning and understanding. And she actually asked the question also, what will we learn about in this part of the book? Why would you ask that type of question? What's that heading toward? Using a subheading could be. And what did they pick up on the features of the text that yeah. she was trying to introduce? Yeah, could be. And also, what will we learn about in this part? Comprehension, reading to get, because it was a factual text. She said, do you remember about when we read about lions and, and kangaroos, a text to text connection? Look for the same information about the male animals as in the lions and kangaroos book. She said, look on page 15, see? And so they actually did the work. She directed them to the page, but they had to do the actual work. Um, she asked the question, what do we know about parents and their children? Relating what was in the text to just general experience about parents and children. It was in the bit where the parent would look for, look after their child. So just to point out that going, even on looking through the dialogue and what is actually said can be another lens to analyse our practice. When I look at this in just as text written down, I start to see things that I didn't notice or think about when I was just seeing it visually. You're <laughs> nodding there. Mm. It was very good. very Yeah, I looked at that and I thought, oh, I like this more than I thought I did at the start when I looked at it in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But then the question is, is it too much? Is this revision? Is it too closed? Are there ways in which it's too closed and that the same understandings could have been arrived at by asking um, open questions? I like the way here, she, that feedback she gave to Ethan. Mm -hmm. I noticed that Ethan, and then she talked about readers stop and go back if something doesn't make sense. So she took his behaviour and used it as a, a review point for the whole group. Mm. Okay, um, <coughs> what, oh, just very quickly, and again, because I want to make the point about integrating all of the strategies. If we know what's powerful and what's useful and what research says about reading comprehension, integrating those strategies. Having, just quickly at your tables, looking at the three texts, I've given you, there's three columns here. You can do Sally and Elephants and Seed Folk, and just quickly audit them against the high reliabilities plus everything that has a little star on it is from the key comprehension research that we looked at early in the year. So just doing a quick audit in that way.